Barbara Grimay from Century 21 Realty in Niagara Falls, Ontario. We're talking about how to keep heat in the home. And the big question this month, in the cold month of January, is how to prevent heat loss. I'm sitting here with John Peters from Niagara Home Inspection Services, and we're going to have a little fireside chat and answer some of the questions that we often hear. First question is, John, clients are asking me, what are the telltale signs that heat is being lost in a house? Well, the obvious uh sign would be that uh, your heat bills are high, of course, and uh, you hear the, the furnace cycling on and off on a regular basis. It tells you that uh, the heat is being lost and has to be replenished by the furnace. And then, of course, uh, on the outside, a uh, very common uh, sort of uh, uh, telltale sign, if you will, are icicles hanging off the eaves, uh, snow melting on the, uh, on the roof is a sign that heat is getting into the attic, melting the, melting mm -hmm. the snow on the shingles. And then, uh, other than that, uh, it's, it's, you know, you feel the cold on the wall, you feel drafts coming in from the windows, uh, you feel, you know, it's, it's cold on the floor possibly, you know, if, if you have uh, an area that's uh, cantilevered over or, you know, right at the outside walls. Those are the common uh, sort of signs, I guess, that you've got a heat, heat loss problem. So you could actually predict, while you're doing a home inspection, that a house may be um, very high in heat bills. You can predict that based on the visual signs that you see at a home inspection time. If I walk down my street in, in, in the winter time, I can usually tell which one of my neighbors have good insulation, which ones have bad insulation. And, that's, it's, and it's just basically looking at the snow on the roof and the icicles. And you talked about um, cold walls, for example. Are there critical areas in a home that need to be taken care of to prevent heat loss? Yes, there are, of course. Uh, you know, the, the number one source of heat loss is going to be the attic because, you know, heat rises, it wants to rise all the time. So, um, if you don't have sufficient insulation in the attic, you know, you're going to lose a lot of heat in a hurry. After that, you know, a lot of houses built before 1955 didn't have any wall insulation. Obviously, heat loss through the walls. Around doors and windows, uh, you know, improper insulation around the doors and windows, uh, it, that's where you, a lot of times you'll feel drafts or through the windows. Uh, if they're older windows, uh, possibly again, pre-1970, uh, you get windows that are very drafty. And uh, you also have heat loss in places uh, like around electrical outlets on the outside walls, uh, at the sill plate in the basement. Uh, there's an incredible amount of heat loss if your basement isn't insulated at all. That could uh, that could account up to 35% uh, of your heat loss, which is uh, a little surprising, I think. But uh, but those are the most of the areas, anyways, where you where you would uh, expect heat loss or cold air in entry into the house. What is a sill plate? The sill plate uh, is is where the uh, the floor joists rest on the sill plate, so it's in between the floor joists and the foundation walls. Uh -huh. The sill plate is right on top of the foundation wall. So if a, um, one of my clients is potentially interested in buying a home in the 1950s, for example, right. and you feel that there's a draft to the windows or that the walls are, are cold, or mm -hmm. generally see a sign of heat loss, what types of things can be done to improve the situation? Yeah, every situation is going to be different, of course. It's going to depend on the age of the house and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the uh, amount of insulation and weather stripping that is there. But uh, Obviously, the first thing you want to look at, is, as we talked about, was the, the attic insulation. Okay, today's standard, the code today is, is R40 or 14 inches, and uh, the standard is actually higher than that. It's R50 or 17 inches of loose insulation. So if you get into a house that's pre-1970, uh, quite often you're looking at R10 or 3 inches of insulation. That's a, it's a big difference going from R10 to R40 or 50. And that can uh, really reduce the, uh, the amount of heat loss and ultimately your, uh, your heating bill. After that, uh, you know, again, the areas that we, we talked about earlier, uh, the wall insulation, if there is no wall insulation, it is possible to uh, inject wall insulation, usually cellulose, by drilling holes on the outside of the wall, if it's possible again, and uh, blowing in uh, cellulose or a loose uh, form of insulation like that. Um, ultimately, uh, you, you know, if the house is older and has inferior windows, you know, it, it's always going to be a, a good idea to replace the windows. Whether you do it in stages or all at once, that is a, uh, another area where a lot of cold air gets into the house. And, and uh, heat loss as well, but mostly cold entry. Around the windows as well, uh, uh, insulating around the windows, caulking on the outside of the windows, 
those are all improvements that can be made as well. After that, you know, if the basement's not insulated, it should be, it should be insulated. Again, uh, critical area at the sill plate that we were just talking about. Quite often you get a draft in that area. And at the rim joist, the joist that goes around the perimeter of the, of the house. Uh, insulating in that area, caulking in that area, making everything, sure everything's sealed up. Uh, on the outside walls, the out electrical outlets, quite often if you put your hand in front of an electrical outlet in an older home, you'll feel cold air actually blowing through that. Uh, they make those wonderful little uh, gaskets that you put behind the cover plates. I'm sure you've seen mm -hmm. them before. Uh, yeah, they, they actually do a very good job in sort of holding back you know, a draft around a, an electrical outlet. So it's another small, inexpensive way of uh, uh, you know, reducing the amount of uh, cold entry or infiltration. Now you talked about the importance of insulation in attics, but how does that work then with the new style homes where there is no attic and the ceiling is vaulted? Okay, well if it's a new style home, uh, they usually use scissor trusses. And uh, in that case, there is an ac accessible attic space above the vaulted ceiling with a newer home. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the homes built uh, more in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, where uh, all, you, all they used were roof rafters. And then, you know, the, the plaster or drywall would be on the other side of the, of the, of the rafter, and the roofing is on the, on, the, on the, obviously, the shingles are on the top of the rafters. That type of area, you know, it's very hard to access. Uh, and uh, you know, those houses, again, built 1950s, 60s, 70s. The standard of insulation at that time was uh, R10 or three inches of insulation, very, very minimal amount. So there can be an awful lot of uh, heat loss through a, an older home with a vaulted ceiling. It's not easy, as I said, to, uh, to upgrade the insulation, but it's doable. Uh, usually you would do that when you're replacing the shingles. At the same time, you should remove the roof sheathing uh, scab a piece of 2x4 possibly onto the roof rafter to increase the uh, amount of uh, cavity so you could add more insulation. And then uh, add maybe uh, an extra R20 on top of the, or 6 inches on top of the uh, existing possible 3 inches. And then you're up to R20 or to 8 to 30 uh, insulation. Okay, and then, and then uh, you have to leave a, an air space, put the sheathing back on again. And uh, if it doesn't already have one, uh, uh, you should have a ridge vent, a ridge vent that runs from gable to gable, right at the ridge or at the peak of the, of the roof, a continuous vent so that uh, each, each one of the uh, cavities between the rafters have a way to vent, okay? So with the, with the new style homes where they have the vaulted ceilings, are you saying that there's enough room between the sheathing, the roof, and the drywall that we see on the inside, there's, there's enough space in there for R40? Paint yes. insulation, or is it different? Yes, there is, and, and it's all accessible. The uh, the roof, the ceiling line that you see on the inside is not the same as the roof line. It's a mm -hmm. scissor truss, so that it actually has um, it has ceiling joists as well as a roof rafter in a, in a uh, truss system. So there ends up being uh, as much as uh, three feet of attic space above the uh, the ceiling that you can see on the interior. And talking about the older style homes, um, I've heard you use the term Eufy or vermiculite. Tell me uh, what do I need to know about that? Yeah, okay, we'll start with Eufy. Uh, Eufy uh, is an acronym for Urea Formaldehyde Foam Insulation. And it was uh, popular in the 70s, and it was, it was basically injected into, into the wall cavities of homes, again, uh, without insulation in the walls. So that would be pre-1955, okay? Uh, it, it, it was popular uh, until they found out that, that the, uh, this expandable foam was, was giving off a formaldehyde gas. And uh, it wasn't too long after that, it was still in the uh, late 70s, I believe, uh, that they found that this, that this gas was being emitted and it was dangerous. So uh, the government uh, provided grants at that time to have the, this foam insulation removed at quite a cost, mm -hmm. I might add. And a lot of people took advantage of that, but there still are houses with uh, uh, UV or urea formaldehyde foam insulation uh, in the walls. Now, more subsequent uh, or recent uh, uh, tests have sort of indicated that it really isn't much of an issue anymore now. Any formaldehyde that was in that foam that has been basically emitted and uh, that foam insulation is, is almost inert. You now, you might get some small readings in a house, but that could be coming from the cushions from your couch. You know, it's there's, uh, they say there's more urea, uh, or there's more formaldehyde being uh, mm -hmm. emitted from that than, mm -hmm. than the insulation. So it's not a big concern. 
Uh, vermiculite insulation is, is a, a granular type of insulation that they usually uh, poured into uh, uninsulated attics. And it was used anywhere from 1925 to about 1985, though it wasn't very popular after uh, 1970. Anyways, this, uh, this uh, mineral uh, was, uh, most of it was mined in, in, a, in a, uh, uh, a mine in uh, Libby, Montana. And this, uh, this mine also contained asbestos. Okay, so, so consequently, um, any, any vermiculite that was mined there, it, it went under the, uh, the brand name Zonalite. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of times if you see vermiculite in the attic, you can find a bag of Zonalite there, you know right away where it came from. Anyways, they have, uh, they've found that uh, if this vermiculite is disturbed sufficiently to, uh, to create some dust and you inhale the dust, uh, it can be dangerous to, to your lungs, okay, mm -hmm. like any asbestos mm -hmm. would be. All right, so it, it, uh, it isn't always uh, readily visible. Sometimes you'll find it underneath newer insulation. Uh, the risk, again, is only if it's disturbed. So, you know, uh, people have their, own, have their own discretion as to whether they want to have it removed or not. Uh, if they do find it, though, it, it uh, is a good idea to have it uh, analyzed. There's a, I know there's a, a company in Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. Niagara Analytical. Mm -hmm. They give you a pretty quick turnaround uh, mm -hmm. on, on uh, the results. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, most times there's not enough asbestos in it to, to be worried about. But it should be, you know, you should treat it with uh, caution uh, mm -hmm. because it is a, it is a, a known uh, hazard. If you're thinking of purchasing a home, we do recommend that you make the offer conditional on home inspection. The home inspector then can find some of the concerns that we spoke of today regarding insulation. And we can also make the offer conditional on insulation inspection in case the home inspector does find potential concerns regarding UV or vermiculite. So thank you for joining us today. We hope you learned everything you need to know about insulation. For more information, check out my website, barbaragrume.com. Thanks for joining us and thank you to John. You're welcome. My pleasure.